Robert. Over the past few weeks, uh, Bob's been asking, Robert's been asking us questions about probability related to iron condors. Is it uh, what, what happens to probability when you go farther out in time? Is it better? You know, how often is probability correct? We've we've gone through some of those. What is the calculation? Is if it's based on a Gaussian distribution, so on and so. We've gone in depth on a couple of these. Robert, we, we that's perfectly fine. I'm just giving background. So. As a follow-up to my recent probability question, the premise is a trader plans to establish a four-wide iron condor trade at SPX at 90% OTM probability and has the choice between placing the trade 45 days to expiration or seven days. The 45 days iron condor should obviously receive a higher premium compared to the seven day, but not always. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me jot. Let me get pen. Let me get my pen. I'm sorry. Um, Ninety percent. And you said four. I don't even think I, I need that. But you said four wide. Okay. Four wide. Um. And you say the forty-five should give more credit, but not necessarily. The capital required on one lot iron condor on either basis would be 2,000 less the premium received held for 45 or 7 days. Assuming the trader plans to let the iron condor go to expiration on either basis and the reliability of out of the money probabilities over the shorter term is in fact better, that's what our discussion was, it's not as smooth. When you go further out in time the probabilities get smooth. Um, so we're saying the shorter term is more reliable assuming normal market conditions. Uh, as was indicated in your recent response, is it preferable to place a 90% out of the money, 90% probability iron condor on SPX each week rather than 45 days out? Would you not have a greater probability of being profitable each week by placing the trade seven days to expiration rather than a rolling series of trades 45 days to expiration? Your thoughts. Okay, so Let's go to other strategies. Let's let's get a visual for those of us that uh, maybe didn't follow that 100%. All right, so I'm going to use SPY instead of SPX. That's all right with you, Robert. It's just easier to load up. You don't get all the strikes. I'm going to go to standard October 18th expiration, which is, you know, you said one week out. I'm going to just look for, for two weeks. Out. Ooh, I want to do this a different way. I am so sorry. I'm going to use this in the search. I am going to use SPY instead of SPX but it's going to be easier for me to use in the search. My apologies, not the search by symbol. Here's our iron condor search. I'm going to clear out all the filters. Um, I'm going to go October standard, 15 days as I mentioned, rather than looking at the every other day, having the Wednesday, Fridays, and Mondays pop up if I do do a tight enough range, which I could, but I'm not. All right, so what do we know? Apologize. I, sh I should use the seven day for your example because that's what you wanted. So two, three, let's go four to eight days. I think that's right. I'm targeting Friday, not the Wednesday or the Monday expiration, I hope. We want a 90% probability between or higher. That's what he's talking about. So on an iron condor position, what am I doing? I'm comparing a bull put credit spread, which we looked at a little bit, and then the opposite trade, the bear call credit spread on the same stock. Now, I can get a higher premium by choosing closer prices, right? What would this be? So regardless, let's say the stock's at 100. I can get a higher profit. The idea is that the stock stays between all four strikes. All four options expire worthless. You keep the net credit. That's the iron condor. Sounds good for a really good neutral market. Now, if I just did, let's say, the 97 and a half, 95 strike, and the 102 and a half, Sorry about that. And the 105, I'm really close to the stock price. I'm going to have a really high profit, but probably only a 70% probability the stock would be below 102 and above 97.5 in the next 7 to 14 days. So I want to get a better probability. What do I do? Maybe I sell the 90 and buy the 85. And I sell the 110 and buy the 105. Still a five point strike difference, but now I've got a 85% probability the stock would stay between 110 and 90. And if I wanted to go further, I could do 85 and 80, much lower profit, higher probability, especially when we're going seven days out. This might only be eight, seven or eight cents. 
okay? So what we're looking for here is the better probability, lower return, and is that potentially better doing it week by week by week than month by month by month? The initial answer to the question is yes. It's better to go week by week by week. Not only because in our previous discussion we saw how the probabilities at the same strike over time get smoothed, where I think we were looking at Apple and the 220, or let's say the stock was at 220, and the 205 strike for seven days out had a 90% probability of expiring worthless. The 90, uh, I'm sorry, the 205 strike put. But when he went out to March, the 205 strike put only had about a 56% probability because there's eight months of market fluctuation. So that probability is smoothed over the longer term. So the question is, is it better to sell week by week by week with this high probability versus going 45 days out in time, which even though with the same probability is going to be further apart and potentially a higher net credit? In theory, I would say the answer is yes. You want to go week by week by week because remember what we talked about with some of our other discussions already today. Throw out the whole iron condor concept. Throw out the whole probability concept. The options that are four, five, two, six months out in time are not four, five, two, or six times the cost. The spread that's five months out in time is not five times the premium of the near term, although in some cases it might be. But looking at the same strikes, that doesn't mean same probability, Robert, I understand that, but looking at the same strikes, it, it won't necessarily, necessarily be five times. So it's always better to get week by week by week because you get a higher annualized profit. When I'm buying for protection or buying for speculation, I want to go two, three, four months out in time to pay less cost per day than trying to buy week by week by week by week. Okay? General rule of options, one of the first basic concepts and rules of options. Selling premium, shorter term, buying further out. Do I think it's a good idea to do weekly spreads? No, every testing I've done has showed me that two weeks out, long term is a trading plan, not related to a probability, a question about probability or anything. Just with bear calls, bull puts, even iron condors, all the testing Ernie and I have done, we've seen better profits using similar criteria going two weeks out in time as opposed to trying to force week by week by week. But in any case, what am I doing here? I'm trying to target Friday 90% probability or above between for the iron condor, and we're just going to look on SPY. And I'm also going to control something else here. I just, to see only a few spreads, I'm going to put the maximum risk to be less between, from one to two. I only want to see maybe two point spreads or two and a half point spreads, okay? Okay, let's see what we get. Ooh, that's creepy. All right, let me, that's probably too much. Let's just try less than two. <sighs> okay, I apologize. Why isn't this working? Should be millions of iron condors in here. I'm really sorry. I, I can't figure out. Let's just, I'm going to lower the prop. Let me take out the maximum risk. I, I can't be the filter that's really killing this. There we go. It was. How about that? All right. So let's get a good view here. I'm going to look for, there's a good one. All right. Now, first off, what do we see? Here's my probabilities. We know it's all 90. These are SPYs all seven days out that I wanted to target. I apologize for the delay. I don't know why that two-point spread was, two-point risk was really hindering it here. That's a four-point spread. That's a three-point spread. Okay, ignoring that, the highest return that comes up with a 90% probability is a 13 cent net credit using the 280, 276, and 303, 307. Four wide, as you mentioned, for me. I, I don't know if that's what you meant. That's what I was trying to look at a moment ago, but four wide, as you said. So that's the highest return with the probability. Okay. We're going to table this for a second. We're going to go to the profit and loss chart. This is on SPY. Let's get a better view of this graphically. Clean up my drawings. 90% probability between, sort of skewed to one direction, but a 13 cent net credit with a 3.4% return against the four point risk. 
as well. Okay. All right. So, yeah, and, and that, that goes to Sam's comments was uh, more closer in time, the risk being there as well, that in seven days you're going to get 10 to 20 cents. Here we are at 13. Um, so this has an ATR in a week of six to eight dollar moves up or down. This week was up nine dollars and down four on the lower side. Okay, so he's just offering some th thoughts there as well on that. Um, so yeah, how far are we out of the money technically? Well, we're at 294, so we're 14 points out on the short side and nine up on the long. And Sam's comment there about the movement that he saw that we saw this week in SPY four to the down and so much to the up, which was close to that. Okay. So this has a 90% probability of getting the full profit of 3.4% in seven days. Let me jot that down. 3.4% in seven days with 13 cent commission. Uh, 13 cent net credit, which might be eaten up by commissions. But again, we saw the waterfall, uh, you know, this week. Uh, you had... Um, you know, interactive brokers kind of already had this, but now you had Ameritrade, and then you had Schwab, and then E-Trade, um, and then uh, who else came out? Someone else came out after E-Trade. They've all dropped their commissions to zero on stocks, um, ETFs, and options as well. Every, it's, it's a battle. You knew as soon as one did it, they were all going to do it. We can count this to three things. Number one is, of course, the the fact that, well, let me all come back to that in the wrap-up. We'll come back to that discussion in the wrap-up, but here we are. Not a bad position, not a bad return for seven days. You know the annualized return is going to look pretty good. Now, same settings. Just on SPY. Not taking into account the risk, four or five points. 90% probability. Let's go out to November. Your 42-day out, Robert. Now, the highest return, of course, we it's right here in our custom spread builder. Oh, not that one. It's right here in our custom spread builder. We've got that shown for us. We can revert back to it. And, you not out. There's no way that's possible. I took that out, right? I took that out, and I took that out. Could be skewed, but, oh, I think I know what happened. I know what happened. Okay. I know what happened. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Am I sorting by probability? No, I'm sorting by return. So let me sort by probability. There we go. Okay. So now here, with the stock at 294, we can go to... 83, 85, 87%. Now, these are one-point spreads. So I wonder if I can force that to be greater than 2 and get your 4 wide. Let me try greater than 3. I don't think this is going to work, though, but I want to see if it does. Yeah, darn it. Oh, pff. I put it in the wrong filter, Robert. I'm sorry. Let me try that again. Okay. Anyway, so we saw where we were before. And here, we can, even with just the 83% probability, we can go to 272 so we're 22 points out of the money in one direction and 20 points out of the money in the other for a higher net credit in this case, but not by much more. Okay, now if we forced it to 90, we'd probably be down here 45 days out. We'd probably be looking at 265s, almost 30 points out of the money, and 325s, okay, as you're short. But the net credit, of course, going that further out would be about the same, wouldn't it? It'd be about 13 cents. 14 cents with that 90% probability for 45 days. So here, there's there are some credits that are double, but this again is I'm not up as high as 90. I know the reason why. Um, I can get that corrected, but in this case, you know you're going to have the better annualized return as we discussed. So, but here is the example. Here is the the gauge. In this case, we're so far out of the money. We're almost 25, 30 points out of the money for 45 days of fluctuation. But keep in mind what Sam said, and this week you saw four down, and you saw about six up. So over six weeks, that might translate to 36 up and 24 down. Not quite 36, are we? <laughs> Not quite there in this one uh, with the out-of-the-money range for a similar net credit. Okay. 
because it's skewed, because it's smooth. And you've got to go further out to get the 90 probability. In this case, SPY and SPX with lower volatility themselves, you'll be far enough out of the money, but I don't know if the net credit is going to satisfy, number one, your trading goals long term. Right? That is 18 cents or 4.7% over 42, 43, 45 days as the max return with the probability you want. Better than going closer, still having a 90% probability with a 7 day out, 10 day out trade, getting almost the same credit, which you could get six times in theory, in the same time it would take you to get this 18 cents. You know, the, the answer is theoretical, okay? I'd probably go two weeks out, one to two weeks out for spreads. That's what I do. I go two weeks out for bull put spreads, so I'm not trading just SPY. And to get the 90% probability is this. But now you can almost say, well, if I kept the same strikes over a 45-day time period and I was right, even if I went to 305, 10 points up, and 285, 10 points down, you still got time to manage it. What would, what, let's do that. Let's do the 10 points, okay? We're just going to do a 10-point spread. And what do I mean by 10-point spread? I, don't, I mean, we're going to keep the four wide in this example for November, standard expiration. But we're going to take a look at 10 away, 305 and 309. And 10 away, 285. 281. A lot of premium on the puts. Hmm. All right. So what are we doing here? We're selling our 305, buying the 309. Selling the 285, buying the 201. And now this is what you'd expect to see. What is the probability between on this one? I'm going to say it's probably only 72, 73% max. Okay. No, nah, it's probably lower than that, actually. You're right. It's probably about a 55% probability between for the 42 days. But again, throwing the probability out the wind and saying, you know, I don't think SPY is going to go above 305 in the next 40 days. I don't think it's going to drop below 285. This is not a recommendation or suggestion. This is not a projection. I'm just saying if you look at it this way and you say, oh, I can get almost $1.54 against a four-point spread or risk of 246, this is 62% return in theory, or in math, I should say. And that is well more than seven times the premium you get with a 90% probability. This doesn't have a 90% probability, but if my assumption is it won't go above 305 or won't drop below 295, which is an extremely risky assumption, 285, excuse me, and I'm, that's why I'm saying it's not a recommendation or suggestion, but I'm saying at that point, if this is your expectation, that's, just, that's, that's what you could get, right? And then at the same time, I could turn around and say, well, I think this is too close. I really like this, but it's too close. If you even drop 20 points away, again, 275 to the 271, you get a better premium than the original one we saw, which was at 271, 272, okay? So, uh, yeah, that's what you want to consider. What do I think is best? The, the simple answer is for spreads not related to probability, but return-wise, you always get a better annualized return going week by week by week or shorter term than going two months out, three months out in time when selling into credit spreads, iron condors, or butterflies. You get a higher annualized return week by week. What's, what's the best long-term approach? In the past, I, I haven't run the test. I can't tell you. I, I can look at the stock chart for all of 2018, see the six out of the 12 negative performance months for 2018, and I can say that, well, Maybe the weeklies would have worked better but than the month than the 45 day out. But what would have happened? I'm sorry, what would have happened in the major events such as February 5th through February 9th, um, March 21st through April 5th, October 5th through November, I'm sorry, October 5th through October 10th, I believe, and then November 8th through November 30th, and then all of December. Every weekly iron condor you opened would have lost on the bull put credit spread to close to 100%. Depending on when you open the 45 day, day out one, it might have hit a 50, 80, 90% loss on the spread, but 
then 20 days later it might have come back up and only been a 5% loss before expiration. Then it might have dropped out a little bit again and been a 20% loss. I, I don't know. Right? That, that comes down to timing of the cycle when you look back. And that can be something that you could probably do, Robert, using some of the historical data is just, uh, oh, I'm sorry, let me go custom here. And we're going to go, sorry. And I might take some of this other information out here so it's easier to see. No, that's okay. It's pretty easy to see here. All right, but you see what I mean. This, this is the gamble that you're talking about. So you make 13 cents here on a 90%, probably 13 cents here on the next week, 13 cents here and 13 cents here. You lose four points here on one or two trades. I don't know. How, let's say you're just doing one trade, Robert. You lose four points. So you've made 52. Okay. And then you lost 387. All right. And then the net, if you did it again the next week, you might have lost another 387. Then you're going to make 26. Then you likely made 26. Uh, I'm sorry, 13, 14 cents. You likely made 14 cents. And then you lost maybe half. Let's call it 190. And made 13, made 13, lost 290, lost a dollar ninety, you know. There's another ninety, one ninety. There's a, this is falling way behind here, and then you might have made here, maybe made here, probably only lost a little bit there. Now here you might be questionable because you might have lost on the bear call side. Made it, made it, probably made it. Might be losing on the bear side. Might be losing on the bull put side. Made it, made it, made it. Maybe getting threatened. Probably made it, made it probably got threatened on the bear call side. Made it, made it. <laughs> okay, so let's just give you that. And then probably made it here too. I'll give you that. And then lost $1.90 on a four-point spread. Probably lost $2 on a four-point spread. If you open an iron condor there, probably lost $2.90 to $3.10, $3.20, maybe more there. Made it. Might have broken the bear call side. Maybe made it might have broken the bull put side, probably broke the bear call side, lost bull put, lost bull put, lost bull put, lost bull put, okay? So this is why I've always been saying that the iron condors, even with a 90, 95, 98% probability, probably weren't overly successful in 2018. Whether you were doing one week out, whether you're doing two weeks out, bull puts were, but iron condors I don't know if were because you probably were losing on the bear call side in some of these areas. Now, 45 days out, I opened here, and I got my 90% probability 45 days out. So let's, let's call it 30, and here. If you withstood this barrage and didn't close out the spread in a panic, you might have actually made the 45 here. And then you open here for 45 days out in time. Mm, you, you might have made it. You know, it, you, you were hurting here, but now nah, you probably would have lost on this one. Then you open the other one 45 days out, probably looking okay. And then 45 days out, so let's say from here, uh, roughly, 30 and then another 15. So here, probably did okay. Then your next 45 day out cycle, here to here. Maybe losing on the bear call side, but might have worked out. Even with the 90% probability, you know, I'm taking that into account. And then here to here, you know, that probably made it. Definitely did not make it. <laughs> uh, and if you opened another one here for 45 days out, definitely did not make it. Okay, so you got to, I'm sorry, I did that wrong, but your winner here, here, possibly here, likely here, even with the turmoil, loss here, maybe loss in the bear here, but loss here, loss here, and loss here. So I'd say... Of the 45, you know, open six to seven trades per year, you probably lost on half of them in that case, okay? But Sam brings up a good point. If these 45 day out spreads, even with a 90% probability, were giving me 30 to 40 cents on the same four point spread when I did lose, I might have been only losing 270, 
or 280. Whereas in the weekly ones, I took 13 cents up front on a four point spread. This was definitely probably the full loss of 287 or close to it if you didn't manage effectively. So you're, you're losing bigger when you get the smaller credits is what he's saying. When I do weekly, I have to, even though the theory is if I sell week by week by week, I get a better annualized return. Taking in the lower credit means when you hit that loss, it's going to wipe out more of your previous gains because it is going to be larger from the lower net credit. But your idea is to keep selling week by week by week. I know that was a babbling, I don't want to say babbling, but I know that was sort of a roundabout way to explain it. But just yourself, Robert, look at the chart and think about where your strikes likely would have been with the probabilities over 2018 or the first part of 2019. Let's not forget that. We started doing this. You might have been losing on the bear call side even with the 90% probability betweens up until, what, February 15th, February 20th, somewhere around there. We just, this was the very bottom, December 26th, and just like that right after that, right back up to this level, remember? Kind of where we are now, uh, but there we go. Okay, so that's what uh, was just trying to show you is that go back and now think about it without the probability. Think about it without applying the probability. I'm not saying you don't want to enter iron condors or bull put spreads with the higher probability, 80 to 85 percent, 90 percent between for the iron condor position. What I'm saying is just go back and look at the chart. Think about what strikes you would have had and when opening every seven days and what strikes you might likely would have had going 45 days out and just look at the chart over that year and think about where you would have had to manage and where you would have lost. And it's not to say that the 90% probability is a bad idea in any stretch of those imagination. What I'm saying is that that's, remember, whether it's one week out, two weeks out, three months out, the probability is an equation based on what has happened in the past with the idea that if the market continues in the same pattern or with the same sort of trend that it has over the last 50 to 100 days, this is the expectation. As we talked about before, I use the probability myself for my bull put spreads. But there is a time when I have to say this is not the right market for bull put spreads, even though there are positions that match my criteria. And if I did do a structure one way or the other, what would have happened over the last year with one week out iron condors, two week out iron condors, or one month out or 45 day out iron condors that match my criteria. Okay, so that's what you've got to consider. But in theory, the general idea is always best to sell shorter term when you're doing premiums such as this is to sell shorter term, week by week by week as opposed to month by month by month. Okay, all right. Okay. Oh, and uh, Sam was talking about Contra ETFs a little bit last week after the, uh, during the discussion last week, and then of course into the beginning of this week, uh, Contra ETF was up 16%. You're using that, we tend to use uh, volatility indexes, and Sam's could use Contra ETFs there uh, to help hedge the maybe spread portion of your portfolio. So when that unexpected does happen, February 5th to 9th, you've got a counter there as well. Um, and of course, Sam's monthly straddles that he has uh, going there as well. He always has an SPY. 300 straddle expired today on SPY. Okay, close it at 285. All right. Okay, so Robert, you're welcome. Um, I know that was sort of a roundabout way to get to where I wanted to explain it, but it's you're absolutely right. Your, your comment and your question, your thought are correct. Is sometimes looking at a 90% probability 45 days out, it may have a lower net credit than the 90% probability in the shorter term. That also is related to the current implied volatility, what's happened in the market recently, that the weeklies might be more inflated and give you a little bit better of a boost as opposed to, well, there's a sentiment that things are going to settle down by November. And so it's not as volatile. I mean, we're really comparing ones that we thought would be 18 cents for November versus 15 cents, uh, 13 cents, my apologies, for next Friday. I mean, that just tells me right there I should be doing the Friday ones, but it looked like it had a good probability. It looked like it was out of the range of the movement we saw this week for the down and the up, but next week is next week, and we're in a headline-driven news market as well. So that's the important thing to consider here about the probability with the concept that is based on what has happened in the past. And any new headline, any new tweet, any new rocket fired into the Pacific, you hear me say that before, 
that could cause a swing in the market one direction. And it, any change in uh, Brexit, one way or the other, could cause change in global markets and the market as well. And we could see a fluctuation we're not prepared for, for us spread traders that were relying on, hey, X or Y happens, we should be 90% above this price, 90% below this price, 92% between. Oh, but someone just threw a wrench into the monkey works and now here we are. And that's, as Sam mentioned, and you saw with the chart, that is one of the risks of the shorter term weeklies is, yes, I would have only gotten 18 cents when we looked at the 42 day out one for that wider spread we wanted. But for what we were looking for for the seven day out, it was only 10, 11, 12, 13 cents. And if I've got a four point spread, if there's a sudden move in the week, I have no time to roll or manage that position. The time decay is going out rapidly and it's below both strike prices all of a sudden. And here I am. Um, and, you know, I'm below both strike prices and at maximum loss as well. All right. So that's, uh, yeah, I might see news on all of that next week, Sam. You're absolutely right. But that's the things to consider um, as well. Okay. So where am I? <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's just navigate back over to our slides here. And uh, I don't see any last minute questions coming in. If anyone does have a last minute question, we're a little bit after six o'clock. So go ahead and send them in. Um, I just want to remind everyone, I said it earlier, of course, but reminder that today's material are my thoughts on your questions designed for educational information, option educational information, and uh, learning the strategies, increasing investing performance, and knowledge of option strategy and management techniques. These are not direct recommendations or suggestions. They are my thoughts on the risks and rewards of various strategies, um, but they're not direct recommendations or suggestions. Any numbers I used of a projection of Apple going to X or Y in the next three or four days was based solely on what the account or what the position might look like if that happened, not that it is a projection of mine or a recommendation. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as those recommendations. Options do involve risk, and we saw some of that today, may not be suitable for all investors. Oh, sorry. For those of you who saw some of the tools, as we talked about the search tool, we talked about the spread tool being able to avoid earnings. We talked about uh, using that insurance tool, a very powerful tool. If you've got an unrealized gain in a stock and you've got earnings coming up, how you can cancel all of the risk, potentially bulletproof the trade uh, heading into earnings. Um, all you need to do to test those out and put them to your advantage in the next uh, short time frame, just go to powerop.com. Put in your name and email address and click Start My Trial Now. You have full access to the site for 14 days with no credit card required. After that, our subscription services start at $45 per month uh, for the lower end-of-day data. We offer other subscriptions with updated data as well, uh, delayed service and even real-time. There's other education available. I showed you the link earlier to go to the uh, long straddle video, powerop.com slash long straddle video dot ASP for that introduction to straddles around earnings. You can see other similar articles at blog.powerop.com. Our full webinar archive, most of it is available to the public. You can see that anytime at powerop.com slash webinars dot ASP. Also, you can check us out on YouTube. A lot of our Friday discussions and some other education is posted right there on YouTube. Uh, leave your comments. Uh, give us a like. Let us know. Follow the YouTube page. You'll get, update, oh, you'll get updated when we post new videos. Uh, I didn't see any last-minute questions come in. Sam says, thank you, sir. Um, kind of you to answer our Q&A. Hey, it's my pleasure. I love doing it. And have a happy weekend. Sam, you have a happy weekend as well. I hope all of you do. Have a great weekend as well. If anyone thinks of any questions over the weekend, just send me an email at any time to support at powerop.com or support at radioactivetrading.com. You can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971. And as we showed earlier at the beginning of the presentation, an hour and a half ago, trial members and subscribers, you can schedule a coaching session at any time. Just click that link and schedule a time that works best for you. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next week. See what the market has in store for us then. Good night.